name is Colin Wolji, and the title of my project is The Effects of Herbicides and Insecticides on Fish Respiration and Plant Growth. The purpose of my project was to determine the effects, whether good or bad, of insecticides and herbicides on fish respiration and plant germination and plant growth. The reason I chose this project was because of the issue of farm chemicals causing so much damage to our environment and to the wildlife all around us, which is because there's habitats and where they live is so near places where herbicides and insecticides are being used. I first collected 15 chemicals, Assert, Atrazine, Banville, Curtail, Largo, Roundup, Tordon, Treflon, 2,4-D, Harmony, Ally, Armor Troll T, Rodeo, and Here is a sample of my project's board for 1990 science fair. The effects of herbicides and insecticides on fish respiration and plant growth. Start off with my procedure pictures. Here's a look at my other pictures. Here's how my graphs were done for the shooting nut. Here is the growth of the plants. This is the overall rankings. I had used barley, buckwheat, confectionery sunflowers, corn, durum, flax, hardwood spring wheat, oats, oil sunflowers, um, and safflower. I don't know if that can show up or not, but as far as chemical and plant growth, Tordon, Tordon, Roundup, Banville, 2,4-D, Fargo, Assert, Treflon, Avenge, Ally, Harmony, Curtail, Atrazine, Armatrol T, Rodeo, and Pydron. That is the ranking from worst to best. Plant germination results. Many sheets. The rest of my germination graphs.
my fish results. Each fish with different water levels and different amounts of chemical. Here's my final rankings of the fish. Banville had the least effect. Atrazine had the in order from least to worst at or when Banville, Atrazine, Armatrol T, Curtail, Fargo, Treflan, Cert, Ally, Rodeo, Hydrin, Avenge, 2,4-D, Harmony, and Tordon and Roundup are the worst. Here's all my germination results. In a nutshell, that is my science project board. The pictures, most of them fell off and I just kind of stuck them on. for the shoot, which is even higher than water. As you can see on my pictures here, it, it was a lot bigger than on water. As you can see, like on Tordon, it had a greater effect. They're stunted. None of them germinated to the fullest. It may have a high germination percent, but it never did have a very good, um, a very good uh, germ or shoot and root growth, which is important in order to have a decent plant. Plant and the third part of my project, are, I then took my results from my germination, as you can see here, for each crop. Um, using this information, I then compiled the final result telling that hard red spring rate was affected the least and germ was affected the most. As you can see on my other rankings, water was affected the most, or had the least amount of effect, except for on the other five, which was atrazine, which is strange being that is a chemical. On germination percent, water was the highest on day two, and arbitral T was higher on day three and four. The third part of my project was on plant, plant growth. I again used the 10 grains, but I planted them in four inches of soil, watering them periodically, and placing them in the climatarium. As you can see, the growth that has improved. These two here are the, for the first ones I planted and placed in the climatarium. These other ones here had only been growing for two days outside of the climatarium. After letting them grow for a week, I would then take pictures of them, as you can see here. A lot of them grew very nicely. I then take and spray them with an atomizer of five sprays of the same diluted chemical. And then I let them sit for one day and rank them according to color and welding. You can see on my pictures here how damaged they were. On my results here, you can see that Armatrol T did rank pretty high. Or the lower the number on my, my rankings here means that it did the worst damage. The higher the number means it had the least amount of damage. Pydrin ranked the best because it showed up more times, it's 15, and that is an insecticide. 2,4-D and Thordon showed up the most as far as being number one, which is the most effect. 
are most damaged. I then compiled my results onto an overall graph up here in order to find out the final ranking for my plant growth. As you can see, a hydrogen had a lot more 15s and 13s, which is pretty high and was good, compared to Tordon, which only had 2, 3, and 4s. Tordon did turn out to be the worst chemical. The hydrogen had the most the best chemical. In conclusion, I found that Banvel had the least effect on fish respiration, and Roundup had the most effect on fish respiration. In plant germination, hardwood spring wheat was affected the least, and durum was affected the most. Also, um, atrazine was affected, what caused the least amount of effect, and tordon caused the most amount of effect. In plant growth, tordon caused the most amount of damage, and pygene caused the most amount of damage. Overall, tordon caused the most damage, and atrazine cause the least amount of damage. In conclusion, I found that pesticides and herbicides do cause a lot of damage to our environment and to the fish and wildlife around us. They will lap um, around us. In order to prevent any widespread damage, we have to have proper application practices and be sure to use them in the proper dosages in order to prevent having such a great effect on our environment. We can't control the environment, but we can help to protect it. Are there any questions? Not this concludes my part of the project. I have compiled some results, articles and whatnot, through various magazines and what various magazines that have been published that deal with agriculture, such as in Idaho, there has been a widespread infestation of the Russian wheat aphid, which they have been spraying pesticides and insecticides on in order to prevent them reoccurring and damaging their crops. When they've been doing so, they've been causing um, chemical runoff and major damage to their wildlife and fish in the streams and lakes and other wetlands. This same incident happened in Texas. This happened all over the world and currently in the United States there's a farm bill trying to be passed by certain environmentalists at Laban has clauses in it which state that the farmers must have be certified applicators, they must read and follow all application labels, they must not load or fill near water reservoirs or water outlets. They must not, um, they have to have properly calibrated equipment and they have to be sure to use diluted rates, I mean, follow their labels exactly so they do get diluted rates. And this concludes my project. Are there any questions? Okay. The title of my project is The Effects of Vitamins, Antibiotics on the Physiological and Psychological Activity of the Mesopristi Serratus. And the purpose of my project is to find the amoxicillin tetracycline B6 dolomite and the effect on the hamster psychologically but physiologically too. First, I obtained six different ham six hamsters. Hamster one, hamster two, hamster three, hamster four, hamster five, and hamster six. Then I separated them into six different groups. The groups I had, which were two groups, two hamsters of antibiotics, two vitamins, and two control. Then I applied the chemical that I used into the water 
I used a 25 to 1 ratio. Okay, the chemicals I use are helpful for certain things such as B6 is helpful for the metabolism of fats and proteins and the nervous system. Dolomite is for bone structure and tetracycline is an inflammatory drug. And amoxicillin is a used for infections. And I do a facial study once a week. I can I collect a half a gram of feces and add two milliliters of water. This is what it looked like before I placed the test tube into the centrifuge. I let the centrifuge rotate for a minute and a half. And then when I, <coughs> then I took out the test tube, I'd separate the facial sample and place the water part containing the parasites under the microscope and I'd count the parasites. As for my studies, I found that my controls were very high in, with parasites. As you can see, I have 460 parasites average. Here's what some of the parasites look like through the microscope. My parasites, which consisted of tape and round rooms. With what was left of the facial sample, I place onto a blood or a nutrient auger plate. I place the plate into the incubator for 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. Then I take them out and rank them by the colonizational growth. As you can see here, some of the tests I did. Then I'd rank them one from to be the best, to six to be the worst. As you can see here, hamster five was to be the best of the colonizational growth. Then on a week, once a week for 15 weeks, I'd weigh my hamsters on a ground scale. As you can see here, hamster four gained all of its weight by week 11, then dropped week 12. For my hamster's weight gain, by averaging out the average gain and figuring out the total, the highest weight gain was 87.6 by hamster number one. And the worst was 55 grams for hamster number three. Then I constructed five different types of mazes. Here's an example for one hamster no in maze number one. Then maze number two, maze number three, maze number four, Maze number five, and that was all. Then I take the maze, and I maze the hamster 15 times in a plain cardboard box. When the hamster was done with its 15th maze, I painted it into a white color. And when that hamster was done with its 15th maze, maze runs on white, I turn it into a black maze. By the time I was done with all my mazing on my hamsters, I did 1,350 maze runs. As you can see here, hamster number two had the vary from plain white and black. As you can see here, for plain on ma for hamster number two on maze five, when it was plain, 44 seconds average. Five, and you can see here, maze hamster two, maze five, white. You can see here, 5 minutes and 42 seconds. As you can see here, hamster 2, maze 5, black, 4.56. And you can see here, plain was to be the best color for that maze running. Then, I, then you can see here, hamster number 5, maze 3, white. Three plane, four fifty six. And hamster five maze three white was two thirty three. Hamster five 
3 black was 342. And as you can see here, white was to be the White was to be the best there. That was one of the very few rare times that white came to be the best average. And by my studies, I found that moxicillin was to be the best for weight and lazing. And tetracycline was the best for keeping the parasite number low. I found that my controls were very jumpy and nervous. And the best vitamin for, over, for growth would be dolomite. Oh, any questions? <laughs> What's that parasite picture, the blown up one? This one? Mm -hmm. It's a tapeworm. Really? Yeah. Of herbicides and insecticides on fish restoration and plant growth. I first, the purpose of my project was to determine the effects, whether good or bad, of herbicides and insecticides on fish respiration, plant germination, and plant growth. I, test, I used 15 chemicals to perform my test. Assert, Atrazine, Banville, Curtil, Fargo, Roundup, Tordon, Trephon, 2,4-D, Ally, Harmony, Armatrol T, Rodeo, and Pygen. I used these 15 chemicals on all three of my tests. On, I used these three chemicals on, on fish respiration, plant germination, and plant growth. I first started on fish respiration by using three fish, minnows, bass, and bluegills. With those three fish, I took a control reading by counting to 30 seconds and multiplying by two. This is what I called the breast per minute. I then added one drop of water and multiplied, or one drop of water and took a breast per minute. I did this for five drops of chemical. After doing this for five drops, I then take and record my results as you see here, by, by organ and then I take and organize them according to chemical, water level, and fish. I then take and rank it by coming up with a spread, which is the distance from the control to the highest and lowest number. I then came up with the final ranking by taking the spread rankings and adding them to the year using the fish each water level. I then take took and ranked each water water level. And I then came up with the final ranking for each drop. For the second part, or on the rest of my fish, as you can see, many of the chemicals had wound up as being their worst, number 15. And as being the best, quite a few of them had band built towards the top or on the top. I then take and place my final results under each water level for the fish. Came with the total and over front, came up with an overall ranking for my fish. Banville turned out to be the chemical that had the least effect, and Roundup was the chemical that had the most effect. The second part of my project was on germination. I used 10 common North Dakota grains. Barley, buckwheat, confectionery sunflowers, corn, durum, flax, hard red spring wheat, oats, some oil sunflowers and safflower. With these 10 grains, I used the wet paper towel method, which is soaking the inner towel in the diluted solution chemical, which is 1,000 milliliters of water to 1 milliliter chemical. And then placing the outer two in water and placing the seeds on top of the middle one, rolling it up and placing it in the bag. The three things needed for proper germination is temperature of between 68 degrees to 86 degrees and um, sufficient moisture and plenty of oxygen. I then check and check them on day two, three, day three, and day four. On day, when I check these, I check them for shoot and rut length and germination percent. When I check them, I use millimeters for shoot and rut. As you can see on some of my graphs, 300 millimeters, 100% um, had three 100% germinations on day two, and on day four, I got up to four 100% germinations.
and 89% germination on day two has been the lowest, and on day four the lowest was 94%, three of them. And on the other hand, Tordon, which was one of the chemicals that caused the most damage, had a 97 as being its highest and zero as being its lowest, and on day four it had 100 millimeters, or 100% as being its highest and 0% as being its lowest. But again, some chemicals did not ha have a harmful effect on the crops. As in Armour Troll T, it had 3-100% on day 2 and 34% on day 34% is being its lowest. On day 4, it had 5-100% is being its highest, which was the most high percent I've ever recorded throughout all my germination tests. And 86% is being the lowest. On my shoot and root graphs, the numbers here correspond with the chemicals, by the way. And the numbers across correspond with the seeds, which I'll take in my chart. On um, water, the highest is 23 and for the root, and for shoot, it was 9 millimeters. The lowest was 3 millimeters for the shoot, and 7 millimeters for the root. On um, the highest for the root, it was 68 millimeters for day 4, and 52 millimeters for root on day 4. The lowest was 34 millimeters for shoot and uh, for root and 24 millimeters for root. I then took these results and put the put them on a graph up here, as you can see, in order to find out which crop was affected the most. But on many of the other um, chemicals, such as atrazine, had the least amount of effect on them. As you can see, it reached the highest out of all my out of all my graphs. 80 millimeters was the highest number ever reached. As you can see in my pictures, also that has some more growth growth than even water did, or compared to a lot of these other seeds, which were t terribly stunted. Which means that if you even have a high germination of growth, the shoot and root length is what matters. On my results. Here you can see on the shoot and root, the atrazine was the highest, except for on day two of shoot, water was higher, which proves that atrazine, even though it's a chemical, will sometimes be better than water if it's applied in the proper dilution. And for the germination percent, water was higher on day two of germination, but on day three and four, armatrol T was higher. On my speed rankings, Hard red spring root was affected the least and durum was affected the most. For my plant germin for my plant growth, I took my ten seeds and planted them in four inches of soil, watered them periodically, and placed them in a climatarium for helpful growing. With that, I then, after a seven day growing period, I sprayed them with the chemical, same diluted chemical. As you can see here. This is what they looked like after one day of sitting. I then ranked them according to color and wilting. Um, I then took the results from that and compiled them into a graph. For barley, armatrol T was hot, whereas the one with the most effect, and pigeon had the least effect. Hydrogen had the least effect on most of my results. On my overall graph, Hydrogen had the highest numbers all the way across the board. So that had the um, least effect. On Tordon, it had the lowest numbers across the board, and it meant that it had the most effect or most damage. Overall, I found out that um, Banvil had the least effect on fish respiration and Tord um, round up the most. And on on plant germination, our atrazine had the most effect, and our had the least effect, and Tordon had the most effect, and hard red spring was affected the least, and Theron was affected the most, and on plant growth, Tordon was affected the most, or had, was the most, was a chemical that caused the most effect, Pigeon was affected the least. Overall, um, atrazine had the least effect and Tordon had the most effect. In conclusion, I found out that all, most herbicides 
and insecticides will cause a great deal of damage to our environment and the wildlife around them, in the wetlands, in the natural habitats that they live in, such as streams and lakes. And that with proper application practices and better equipment and chemicals that do cause less damage to our environment, we will be able to protect it better. Because we can't control the environment, but we can help to protect it. I have compiled many articles about chemicals and how they've been affecting the whole world. In, for instance, in Idaho, the Russian wheat aphid has been infested there, and they've been spraying many types of pesticides and have then formed quite a bit of runoff, and polluted their streams, lakes, rivers, and a lot of areas. And the fish and birds and animals have been killed and are dying or getting sick carrying that disease on to other animals. The same incident happened in Texas. There's been a farm bill trying to be passed by the environmentalists who have, who have, spent, have been trying to pass it because there's two things in there that's really important. One, that they're saying that farmers have to become certified applicators in order to use any pesticides and that they have to, and the, it's very, they're trying to make restricted use chemicals into prohibited use chemicals. And they're trying to also make sure that farmers always use protect, or, um, protective measures when using the chemicals, such as not spraying near or around water, or any place where water would ever be passing by, such as in a gully, gully, or any place. Are there any questions? If not, this concludes my project. The name of my project is Usage of Crop and Plant Extracts as Natural Growth Hormones. The purpose of my project was to see if I could find a natural growth hormone from 10 different types of plant extracts and 10 different types of seed extracts. I started out by collecting 10 different types of seeds. I then planted my seeds in 4 inches of soil and grew them in dirt for 2, I grew them for two weeks, then I uprooted them and ch chopped them up and put 10 grams into 200 milliliters of water to make an extract. Then I did the same with the seed extract, ground up seeds. I took 10 grams of that and put 200 milliliters of water in that. Then I counted 100 seeds of each plant, of each crop, barley, confectionery sunflowers, corn, durum, pirate spring wheat, lentil beans, oil, oats, oil sunflowers, pinto beans and soybeans. Then I, um, then I soaked them in each extract for 15 minutes and I prepared the wet towel, wet paper towel germination method. And I took three paper towels, put the seeds into the paper towels, put them in a plastic, rolled them up, put them in a plastic bag, and put them in a warm environment. Then the next day I took them out and measured them for germination percent and root and shoot growth. I did that for the first 35 days. And then I, along with the, after each test, I took pictures of each test. And here you can see um, old solution. They grew, they're quite long. They all are. And lentil seed solution. And they, are, they all are quite long. Then um, and I took, I, bring, I recorded the results and ranked them accordingly in my germination test. Day 5 control, powdered spring wheat had 100%, and the lowest was pinto beans at 58%. So that was there. And here, powdered spring wheat extract, day 5, um, barley at 100%, along with vectionary sunflowers, germ, and harvest spring wheat. Corn had the lowest at 87%. The confectionary sunflower plant extract, and 100 percent all the way across, uh, all the way across. But before, but for confectionery sunflowers, Harvard spring wheat lentils, and oil sunflowers, and those had the lowest of 90 percent. In here, day one pinto bean seed extract. Um, corn did not germinate, or pinto beans, or soybeans. Um, Harvest spring wheat was the highest of 73%, where barley, barley is close to 71%.
and day one hybrid spring wheat seed, corn did not germinate, nor did pinto beans, and hybrid spring wheat was highest with 66%. In my root and shoot growth, day five control, the highest was 102 millimeters, and the lowest is 45 millimeters at lentil beans. The ratio day one germ extract is 12 millimeters was the highest barley and corn was a did not germinate nor did soybeans. And hybrid spring wheat plant extract grew all the way up to 166 millimeters and its shoot high shoot growth was 71 millimeters and the lowest shoot growth is 43 millimeters and lentils grew the lowest shoot 41 millimeters. And pinto bean plant extract day five, we got all the soybeans went all the way up to 191 millimeters, and the lowest is 49 millimeters, so that's quite an uh, interval between those two. Boiled sunflower seed day one, 13 millimeters was the highest in soybeans, and um, Pinto beans was only one millimeter less at 12 millimeters, and corn did not germinate, so that was the lowest. And day five germs, seed extract, soybeans went all the way to 162 millimeters, and the highest shoot growth was 54 millimeters at barley, and the lowest shoot growth was harvest spring rate 42 millimeters, and the lowest rate growth was 46 millimeters in the Then I went across my graphs and I ranked them and divide by 10 and I ranked the juices according to what they were. And um, root growth day, day one, control was the lowest so they all helped to grow better. And um, confectionery sunflower extract, plant extract was the highest. Again on day three, control was the lowest and oats extract was the highest there. Yeah. And then shoot growth, day three, control was also the lowest. Confectionary sunflower extract was the highest again. And control was the lowest on day five, too, with both extract. Um, the, high, the highest. And here I ranked my plants, which which plant grew best. And iris green wheat grew quite well, as it had up. 80 to 100 percent in the average or to total the total at the bottom with the seed and plant extra to 98.8% on day five and the root growth averaged up to 98.5% five millimeters with um, the highest was 133 millimeters and that was lentil extract. And shoe growth, it averaged up to be 79.2 millimeters and the highest there was 63 millimeters. And soybeans, and soybeans, the um, average for germination day five is 95.6 millimeters, and the average for root growth in day five was 127.3 millimeters, which was the highest of all. And my overall crop rate in harvest spring wheat was the highest on all the germination tests, and corn was quite low on all of them. So corn was probably the lowest there. And root growth, Harvest spring was the highest there, but it went down to six on day three and down to seventh on day five. And so it ended up with confectionery sunflowers, the root growth was the highest. And shoe growth, barley was quite high all the way across, being first of day three and being second day five. Harvest spring was the highest on day five, but it's only 9.2 millimeters. And then I can in my conclusion, I found that um, confectionary sunflower plant extract was the best extract, and um, barley seed extract was the second, and pinto beans and soybeans grew the best root, and harvest spring wheat and barley grew the best shoot. And I would use this natural growth. I, these could be used as natural growth hormones. This concludes my project. Is there any questions? My name is Casey Mann. 